I had my first shutdown in a really long time last week and it was really hard. <laughs> It was definitely like a mixture of different elements that pushed me towards shutdown, almost into a meltdown. Um, it was after my first sort of trip out of the house by myself in quite a long time, especially into the city. I was having really horrific lower back. Um, muscle spasming sort of pain that I used to deal with regularly uh, a few years back like all the time I haven't had this pain in at least two years is sort of my estimation um, so that really gave my body uh, a shock but I really wanted to attend this um this group, this get together, because it's something that's really important to me mentally. Um, it's funny, I'm recording this voiceover a bit over a week after the shutdown, and I've not been able to make it to this week's meetup because of my chronic illness. So, um, feeling fragile both mentally and physically whilst recounting the experience I had last week with my shutdown. Um, so there's been a lot of times where I've looked back and been able to say, oh yeah, damn, that was a shutdown or that was a meltdown of some kind, not just a, an ordinary, regular, run of the mill panic attack that was autism that was my autism that was me being autistic and not being able to cater to my needs and becoming very overwhelmed um so along with my back pain last week uh yeah there was a lot of just overwhelmingness of getting transport um I've also mentioned a few times recently across different spaces online that my eyesight keeps getting worse like every every year I'm um, getting an eye test and getting new prescriptions and I feel like I almost need to do that every six months or so because uh, by about the six month mark I'm struggling to see things again um, and that's where I was at as well last week. Uh, which added to the overwhelm. It was very difficult to read the train signs. Um, which doesn't help the overwhelm and panic. Um, I got to the station like a minute too late for the train home. I thought I would have a train in about 15 minutes or 20 minutes I could go and find something to eat but unfortunately that was a different train that did not go where I needed to go and actually the next train was in basically an hour um, I would be getting to that station at like 9pm for an arrival back to my home station at like I don't know, 20 past 9 maybe to get home for half past 9 at night which is late for me I haven't really been out at all in a really long time I can't actually remember the last time I was out late in the evening um, and I wasn't prepared I couldn't find anywhere open for food anywhere that had any food that I could eat because I was also absolutely starving. The meet up sort of ran through the time I would have normally had dinner. So I was hungry by about a half an hour into that meeting. 
I was dehydrated as well. Even though I had been drinking whilst I was there, I tend to struggle to remember to drink water if I get um, not necessarily distracted, but you know, if I'm if my attention is being held by something else, you know, like I was in a whole new environment, a whole new thing going on. Uh, also, the weather was like the worst kind of weather where it's like too warm to wear clothes <laughs> but also not really that warm um, especially as it gets into the evening so it was very difficult to work out what to wear that wouldn't be a sensory nightmare even though it actually definitely was a sensory nightmare it was horrific um, yeah, I got a mixture of like trains and buses and had to do a bit of walking and struggled to find the place. You know, so whilst the actual event itself was fine, getting there and getting from there back home was a lot. Um, and then finding out the train home was going to be so late. I just really felt, I just felt so empty and hopeless, which I think is probably one of my signs of an oncoming shutdown, where I just feel so intensely hollow and sad that nothing feels right nothing feels worth it nobody cares about me um you know a lot of things that when i'm not having a shutdown or a meltdown i can logically go that's not true or like i can help talk myself out of those feelings but i just felt so intensely alone and sad that even messaging people was hard. Um, when I do go sort of non-verbal or vocal, it's usually more of like a physical thing of my actual voice I struggle to use, which did happen, but yeah, I also felt, just found it really difficult to even put together sentences to text people so past a certain point I was like okay I'm just going to do what feels manageable at the moment so um, I kept my headphones in and just listened to my favourite angry music that sort of blocks out the outside well, noise, but also helps with not even expressing my feelings, but just managing them and not becoming completely overwhelmed by them that I have a meltdown in public, uh, which has happened before and is really scary and not very fun. I just wanted to get home. I didn't want to eat anything there were just too many things going on for my brain to deal with all at once and I just wanted to get home and be comfortable and safe again so yeah this is what I did when I got home I couldn't speak for a good 45 minutes um, and I just did everything I could to make myself feel more normal. I did my skincare, I put my hair up to get it out of my face for the overstimulation. I sat and listened to the loud angry music and just kind of let myself stim along to it and just paid attention to how my body was feeling. So yeah, did some stretches, moved around a bit as well. Um, and then after all this, I did eventually go and have like a bowl of cereal <laughs> before I went to bed. So 
I was just feeling a lot better, a lot more like myself um, after allowing myself time to kind of unwind and come back, come back down to my baseline. But it was a lot to go through and it was quite distressing and not super fun. Um, I'd like to avoid this if possible. Anyway, like and subscribe, leave your comments down below. I'll see you next week. Bye.